Joe Biden continues to edge the world closer to World War III. Jen Psaki defends the former vice president's vacation habits and why liberals stop calling themselves proud liberals. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee with your October 24th edition of The Breakdown. Now, if you get to the end of this video and you find it informative, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit that subscribe button below and be sure to click the notification bell. We're very close to a million subscribers on the channel. And if all of you who are watching will just click that subscribe button, it'll maybe get us there and go a long way to changing the leftist landscape of social media. Over the past 24 hours, Israel has continued its airstrikes on Hamas targets in Gaza, but the expected ground invasion is yet to begin. There have been conflicting reports about whether the Biden White House was pressuring Israel to hold off or even declare a ceasefire. Here's Biden being crystal clear about that. I'm sure you made as much sense out of it as anybody. However, his handlers in the administration are slightly more elusive, though approximately just as confusing on their stance regarding a demand for a ceasefire. Will we see the United States calling for a humanitarian pause? What we want right now is make sure Israel has the tools it needs to defend itself and to go after Hamas, and that humanitarian assistance keeps flowing. Now, it's started, and it's a good thing. We want to keep it going and keep it sustainable. That's what we're focused on. Hmm. I'm just glad that our government has a handle on messaging. I'm sure that isn't a reflection on their ability to strategize militarily. Despite Biden's bungling efforts, on Monday, Hamas released two elderly Israeli women who were being held hostage. So you would think with all of this going on, not even to mention the economic issues that we're still having, the catastrophe at our southern border, the disarray in the halls of Congress, and the terrorist sympathizers across the country and around the world who have come out of the woodwork in mass, you'd think with all this going on that a vacation, while it may be the first thing on any president's mind, you'd think it would be the last thing on any president's itinerary. Not so for our vigorous visage of vitality in the White House, having spent barely a week away from his Delaware home and about a month from Rehoboth Beach, it seems that Sleepy Joe was long overdue for a good old-fashioned taxpayer-funded walk on the beach. Well, fortunately for Joe Biden, he still has a staunch defender in his former press secretary and current MSNBC propagandist Jen Psaki. She offered a brilliant rebuttal to criticism of Joe Biden's vacation. Even the clumsy efforts by the RNC and the usual suspects trying to make hay out of video showing the president and first lady walking on the beach in Delaware this weekend. By the way, he also did many, many calls with foreign leaders and even the Pope. Mm, I'm sure Joe was very, very productive on that vacation. Fortunately for America, nobody pays much attention to Jen Psaki or her network anymore, which goes to explaining why more Americans than ever in both parties now favor setting a maximum retirement age for politicians. Although, to be fair, Joe's retirement age from politics probably should have been age 30. But there are certain advantages to getting older. For example, those of us of a certain age have learned that leftists can't point to any successes of their policies. So they can only win debates by constantly changing the terms. When you get to my age, you've lived through enough of their terminology switcheroos to recognize them and remember only too well what they're really talking about. Where Corinne Jean-Pierre stumbles and fumbles her way through answers while we watch on just cringing and cringing at her every utterance. On the other hand, Jen Psaki well, you have to say she had a way about switcherooing the real issues and questions which she was confronted with and doing it with a little more confidence. I'm sure she gained a few tricks when she was working for President Obama. Think back to when liberals used to be proud to call themselves liberals. They even used those exact words. I'm a proud liberal. But somewhere around the time when Jimmy Carter and the Iran hostages and gas lines were replaced by Ronald Reagan, the word liberal became so toxic that they simply stopped using it. Whenever this happens, and it happens pretty often, the media try to blame it on conservatives for tarnishing liberalism, or whatever term, by saying bad things about it. But they say much worse things about us, 
and we still call ourselves conservatives. The truth is, we didn't give them a bad name. We don't hold enough sway over the media to poison someone's name the way they have with Trump. Liberalism gained its toxic reputation through their lousy policies. You know, the ones that create division and hardship for everyone they touch. We couldn't have convinced Americans to start using liberal as a curse word. They had to earn it. And boy, did they. And that's how liberals suddenly became progressives. It sounds so much more positive. I mean, everyone likes progress, but don't be fooled. Progress is another term that's been redefined by the left. The late comedian Gallagher once said, if pro is the opposite of con, then the opposite of progress must be Congress. That's true. But it could also be said that progressivism is the opposite of progress. Because if you think about it, what do they stand for that could actually be considered progress? Everything they promote is a retread of old failed policies of bygone days that they keep trotting out again and again. I guess they never heard Einstein's definition of insanity. You know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. While conservatives believe in free markets that create tech breakthroughs like clean nuclear energy and hydrogen fuel cells, progressives want to ground airplanes, rely on windmills for power, and make people shiver at home in the dark. How is any of that progress? Progressives believe that the failed economic system known as socialism, you know, the one that imposed oppression, starvation, and misery on countless people, they still believe it can work if you just fumigate it by renaming it democratic socialism. Some of them even dress in dark clothes and physically assault those who disagree with them politically, while others join in rallies celebrating the murder of Jews. These progressives ironically call themselves anti-fascist. Old school liberals fought for a colorblind society where people were judged by their character and not by their skin color. Today's progressives want to divide people by race and judge everyone on nothing but their skin color. They're even bringing back segregated campuses and white and black only graduation ceremonies. And that is not progress. It's a throwback to the abhorrent racism of the days of Jim Crow. But progressives have a new term for it, anti-racism. Similarly, anti-Semitic is now called pro-Palestinian. Well, I could go on, but I think I've made it clear that leftists should be prosecuted under truth and advertising laws for calling themselves progressive. The terminology is as deceptive as calling abortion women's health care or reproductive justice, or for calling taxes revenues and government spending investments, calling confiscatory 90% tax rates paying your fair share, or calling the proven failed system of socialism economic justice, all of which progressives do that very thing. See what I mean when I say they have to keep constantly changing the terms just to keep from losing arguments? It's why I prefer to call them what they are, leftist. Or if I'm feeling generous enough to call them something that sounds kind of like progressive, but is much more accurate, I just call them regressives. Well, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll help us get to a million subscribers by subscribing to the channel below. Be sure to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comment section. Check back in tomorrow. That's Wednesday, the 25th at 1.30 p.m. Central Time for the Live with Mike live stream. I'll be covering more of the news of the week, and you can also ask me anything you want. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It's completely free. That'll do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.